Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Let me begin, first of all, by, I guess, establishing my own protocol. Ladies first. My darling wife, Gloria Toashe III, the brains and the beauty of everything you see here today. The former First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dame Patience Jonathan. Thank you for your presence, ma'am. The First Lady of Kwara State. I have taken the liking to the First Lady. She said yesterday that she has earned her titles. It took her 30 years to become an ambassador. Ambassador Dr. Olufolake Abdul Razak. You're welcome. My brothers, this evening, all the way from Uganda, His Majesty King Oyo, Rukiri IV of Toro Kingdom, thank you for being here. His Majesty, my brother, the day of Agua, yours was a shorter journey, but still an important one. Thank you. Our gallant Chief of Defense Staff, General Chris Gwabin Musa, thank you for honors, honoring us with your presence and your wife this evening. Thank you. Members of the National Assembly here present, federal ministers here present, and uh, I am a grassroots person, so I'm going to acknowledge my grassroots leaders, the chairmen of Worry North and Worry South local government, thank you for supporting us here tonight. All our speakers at Elevate Africa over the last couple of days, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, actually I made a note here, where is Bovi? He's on the phone. Oh yeah, Bovi, come. You are going to repeat something. You mentioned two of my subjects and you forgot to add the most recent honor I gave them. Elevate Africa, that also applies to you. You acknowledge the presence of Deria Wushika and you only put OFR, MNI, and I was looking, where is ROI? And then Bovi, you come and you did not mention it. You mentioned Julius Rone and you neglected to add ROI. So you will do it again. And also, Samamu Kapemu is here, ROI. All right. Well, I guess his name never came up. But uh, Samamu Kapemu, ROI. You are welcome. So Bovi, once again, for Julius and Derry. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't get a second chance this often. Please, can we put our hands together for Dr. Julius Rone, ROI. All right. And o and o Dr. Julius Rone, O-F-R-O-I, my best friend. <laughs> and of course, please. One of our, like I said, one of our favorites, immediate past chair person of Access Bank. Please give it up for Mrs. Awoshika Aro I. Aro O I. All right. Your Majesty, you, you do know you have an accent, so I know they hear the O. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bobby. Dr. Awoshika Aro I. All right, thank you very much. Well, the reason we did that is we do not give honors in vain, so it must be acknowledged. We thank God for this successful inauguration of Elevate Africa, and specifically subtitled The Africa We See. Images control and determine perception. And I want to start on a military note, and I'm very glad that our Chief of Defense Staff is here. I know a couple of days ago, there was 
a Nigerian officer that was honored in the UK. Um, I don't know if it was Sandhurst. It was Sandhurst. Now, the reason why I want to start on that note, when we talk about perception, when you read Nigerian history, you hear initially all our officers were training at Sandhurst and they all came out as very um, distinguished officers and gentlemen. And obviously as time passed, um, I don't know if it was an issue of funding, our officers were being sent to India, Pakistan and other places and uh, it, you could tell the difference. So I was very glad to hear that not only are our officers going back to Sandhurst, but this young officer excelled and he was the most distinguished officer from officers coming from all over the globe. A Nigerian officer was singled out for distinction. And I said to myself, this is clearly what we want to see coming out, not just from Nigeria, but from Africa. And the second point, um, because when I started making my notes, it was um, the first point actually was um, something I saw a few years ago. It had to do with our army. I believe there was an event in Scotland and that was one of the most precise, organized, beautifully coordinated military matches I have ever seen. And they mixed it not just with the typical military fashion, but there was a bit of some cultural appropriation into it. It was truly beautiful. One of those moments where I have been proud to be a Nigerian. And this was now our military making us proud. So salutations to our military for also being stellar and exemplary Africans. As Africans, we all have a collective role to play in elevating the image and the perception of this continent. Um, I have spoken about it a few times and others have spoken about it several times about the shape of this continent, which is like that of a gun. And a gun has different parts. And like the human body, we all have different parts. And God has designed it so. We are all to identify our parts and stick to it. The trigger cannot be competing with the barrel, with the handle. The brain cannot be contending to do what the heart does, what the legs does. Everybody should identify that this is the role that we are going to play collectively to make the whole be great. God has created Africa and naturally bestowed roles for the different peoples on this continent. At our quiet dinner last night, I mentioned that it is of note, or it's interesting to note, that when God was creating this continent, he put several rivers in this continent, but seven great rivers. Seven great and mighty rivers, of which two of them are in this country, Nigeria. Fusing, the lesser one, Benway fuses into the Niger. And every time I think about how these rivers beautifully intersect here in Nigeria, what comes to mind is that singular portion in the Bible. And even though it was written in reference to Ethiopia, I always feel it is applicable to Nigeria. And I am paraphrasing. Go, you swift messengers, to a nation tall and smooth of skin, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the two rivers divide. In chapter 18 of his book, Isaiah wrote this 5,000 years ago. And I find in God's word, it can be applied several times and have many different meanings depending on how your eyes open to see what is in there. Um, 
God's word for Africa has already gone out. And it is for us to open our eyes and to see the first signs, interpret them correctly, so that our identity and purpose is well informed and we are able to walk in that direction. Now for some humor. A little over a decade ago, the world was announcing, it was all over the covers of magazines and headlines, this is the time for Africa. The time is now, this is Africa's time. It was all over the world. And the whole world was watching Africa to see, is Africa going to respond and step up to this uh, schedule that the West had put for Africa? What these non-Africans failed to see, since we are all here to receive sight, was that they did not factor in African time. All the Owambe weddings that these non-Africans had been to, you would think that they have learned about the timing of Africans. But eventually, when we show up and we are organized, the force, the power, the presence, the depths of Africa are felt. Let me use this opportunity to say that we indeed should really do, be um, we really should do better as Africans with our timing, and we will. That's another conversation for another day. But since Dr. Feladrotoye mentioned it today, he took the words out of my own mouth. I'm hereby using my authority to redefine the concept of African time as simple and punctual. You are welcome. To our ambassadors, I had told Davido when he came to worry over the weekend that known or known to them, that is him and his colleagues, his peers, our musicians and artists, they are following a heavy and potent pattern. This pattern where they are, this is the pattern where they serve as our forerunners heralding the coming of the true African rising that is beyond entertainment. Because that's not a concept that must be correct, corrected. Yes, indeed, God has endowed the black man with an unfathomable ability to dominate the arenas of sports and entertainment. And we will continue to dominate those arenas, by the way. Because once the proverbial ball or microphone is put in the hands of a black man early enough and he submits his God-given talent in humility to discipline, the game is over before it even begins. But as great as these our heralds are, it's just like the way people respond to angels and they are in awe because the world is in awe of these our heralds. Imagine what the response of the world would be when the real substance in all, its in all its complexity arrives. And I announce to you today that it has arrived. But what are we going to do different this time? We will have to elevate and empower our women. God has given them tremendous birthing power. As African men, we need not only to tap into the creativity and birthing power of our women, but we should encourage it, support it, and elevate it. You give a woman a seed, an idea, a concept, whatever it is you give to her, she will incubate, nourish, and give it life. As I said earlier, all you have seen here since yesterday has come as a result of this man giving room, resources, and inspiration to this beautiful woman. And this glorious last couple of days is the end result. My darling, I bless you with the ability and capacity to be and do more.
continue to be fruitful and multiply. And I bless all of you in this gathering with the same. May there be a positive ripple effect across the continent. Throughout the session, we've spoken a lot about the connectivity of this continent and um, the challenges. And um, my friend, His Majesty from Toro Kingdom, I invited him here and I made an assumption in my mind that he was just going to simply get on a plane in Entebbe and fly directly to Lagos in four hours. And then we would fly him from Lagos to Wari in 35 minutes. He ended up embarking on an Israelite journey, having to fly to Kenya, and then to Kigali, and then to Lagos, and then to Wari. If I had known that was the path he was going to travel, I would have hesitated to ask him to come. But I'm glad he came. And I believe he has judged it worthy of his own royal effort. However, I think that he didn't just decide to hide behind the stressful nature of the journey and give an excuse to say he couldn't make it. From one king to another, I believe that what has happened here with him symbolically making that journey also begins to bridge the divide on this continent. He is coming here from where the largest river on this continent is birthed in Uganda in East Africa. And he has come to where I came in here thinking was the second largest river in Africa. And as God would have it, the fun fact that was placed on my spot corrected me in telling me that the Niger is the third largest river in Africa. So clearly, God was looking out for me so that I didn't come here and make a mistake. He has come to the home of the third largest river in Africa, where it empties into the Atlantic Ocean in the Niger Delta. Why is this symbolic? It has been noted that one of the things that has plagued Africa from truly developing the way Europe and America has is that for all the great rivers that we have, they are not easily navigable as the other rivers in Europe and America. And that has really limited inter-African trade and movement. But still, God has blessed this continent, even to a point where it makes things too easy for us. And at this point, I want to use an analogy. Um, for those of you who may know me, I am a big basketball fan. And I think one of the greatest duos in basketball, for those who may know, famous names, Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. Kobe Bryant, probably one of the greatest basketball players to ever play the game, was so frustrated at Shaquille O'Neal. Why? Because Shaq felt he was so big, he did not have to jump. He did not have to put in so much effort because just his presence, the little moves here and there, nobody could, nobody could contain him. And he did well for putting in the little effort that he did. But Kobe kept telling him, if you would just jump a little bit, if you would just run a little bit, if you would develop your, your, your free throws, your shooting, you would be the greatest ever to do it. And Africa is like Shaquille O'Neal. We are just endowed and blessed. And with little effort, we achieve quite a bit. But it is time for us to get down and face the fundamentals so that we can truly blow the world away. But things are a lot more competitive in the world today, still on my basketball analogy, because you now have um, Wemby. For those of you who still follow basketball, he's not doing what Shaquille O'Neal was doing. Long guy, he's running, he's dribbling, he's shooting, and truly 
nobody can contain him. Africa needs to pay attention. We also need to package our past properly. There has been so much cultural appropriation of African history and African culture. And there has also been a deliberate misappropriation of the same. It's not only our artifacts that have been looted by the rest of the world, but our ideas and our concepts have been taken by the world and presented back to us as their own. The Western ideology boasts so much in its roots in ancient Greece. But ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, a lot of enlightenment in Greece came from Africa, it came from Egypt. The play on words of Europe being in the Dark Ages, I dare say, was a time when Europe was dominated by men of dark color. Which is why, interestingly enough, for a people that kept accurate records before the Dark Ages, the records are silent until they come out of the Dark Ages. But I will not say any more than that. But back to my point, as the 21st monarch of my people, we did not have any physical representation of our first 16 monarchs. They existed only in name. I felt an overwhelming need to go back into the past and create an identity for them. A persona, a logo, which was what I came up with. And it's similar in a sense to what Christ did on the cross, going back to restore and redeem those that had fallen and slept before him and lead them on into glory. And now by the grace and direction of God, we are leading our people into a greater glory. As we said on the coronation day, we will inspire and collaborate with all Africans to do the same. And I charge all of you to do the same in all your spheres of, of influence and your calling. The Africa we see without the eyes, the famous saying goes, which are the windows to the soul, we see nothing or we do not see correctly. I have been seeing again another biblical example, this time in the image of the biblical Samson as the strong black African man who intimidated and made everyone uncomfortable. They could not deny his strength and greatness and they came up with a scheme to subjugate him by taking out his eyes. Africa, our eyes have long been taken out and they have dictated to us what we see and how we see. While they have kept Africa under their exploitation and amusement and entertainment, but no more. It is time for us to start over and we do not necessarily have to pull the house down as Samson did, but we must get our lens and our eyesight correct as we take over the narrative and direction of the conversation. As we say in worry, we they shine our eyes. I want to give a mental illustration which I feel will help us when we want to imagine the way going forward. Because when we leave here today, the old mindsets and sentiments will confront us as we want to move forward. So I want to give you a fundamental block to inspire a mentality of abundance and replenishment that recycles and rejuvenates. Because it is the mentality of lack that makes us to be so quick to try to pull down, even when people are giving us good ideas. And so, not only do I consider myself an elegant ambassador of Africa, I consider myself a dispenser of blessings to Africa. 
I choose to inspire based on my God-given identity. And so I have become a proud walking billboard of African attires and apparels. Everything flows from identity. I honor my ancestors, but I do not worship them. I only worship the almighty God. The same God who created this world and my ancestors themselves. However, there are times you can say one feels the presence or the inspiration of my forebears. The authority that they have held on this throne, which God has given to me now and has placed his stamp on it, his stamp on it. So sometimes it feels not just triple filtered, but filtered 21 times. God has made me king and specifically, literally, king of water. So I want to bless you all with the image of water. An ocean, not a river. Because it is important that when we are given analogies and justifications that may want to throw us off, we need to see ourselves as water that is constantly replenished. The water cycle. God has blessed us such that there is more than enough when we see ourselves as water. Nobody can go to the ocean with buckets and say you want to steal from the ocean. The ocean will not notice that you have taken water from it. And so I want to bless all of you here with that mindset. Because I hear a lot, but the bread is not enough. The rice is not enough. Everybody thinks it will finish. And because they think the ideas or the resources we finish, everybody wants to rush and grab, rush and grab. But always think about water. And it will replenish and rejuvenate itself. I must also speak to the timing of this Elevate Africa. Because it is happening at a time when Nigeria is going through quite a bit of challenges. Some may think, oh, we could have spent our money better. We could have done empowerment. We could have done something that translates directly to grassroots and all of that. But this revelation, this elevation is happening when we are at rock bottom. Like Isaac who was digging wells during a time of famine. That this is being drilled and instilled during this time and is successfully birthed and established today, it shows that this is something deeply rooted and it will outlive all of us and we shall all be mentally transformed. And so, in conclusion, I want to refer to the quote by Steve Jobs. He said, the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. Stories inform who we are and how we see ourselves from top to bottom. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not rhetorical. Do you want to hear a story? Are you sure? All right. All right. Listen carefully. It's a story of my lineage, and it is meant to inspire all of you and inspire the African mindset. My lineage originally goes as far back as Ogiso, which is the sky element, then that of Yoruba, which is the earth element, and then that of Ogiame, which is the water element. I am no scientist, but I think these are the three key elements in life. Iwere land, Wari kingdom, where Ogyame reigns under God. 
a powerful geolocation where the trinity of sky, soil, and sea converge. A potent trigger point for this great and mighty continent. And God had all that in mind when he was designing this particular Ogyame. The title and authority God has given me, and this is me teasing, Americans will say I'm being hilarious, but it's not funny. The water in every human being will respond to me. It's just a double portion when it is an Ishakiri individual, because in their case, the blood and the water in them will respond to me. And I want to conclude this point by once again referring to God's word, which interestingly, Fela Dorotoe had asked a question earlier today. In the book of Proverbs 25 verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. And in true dramatic fashion, because God knows his African children very well, he has decided to use a literal king to search this one out. The time is now. The day is here. God's DNA is in us. That same creative power of spoken word, which he used to create the world, is in us. He also tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. On a third and final note, he has told us that where the word of a king is, there is power. And on this tripartite foundation, I want to bring everyone in this room into alignment with God's word and the authority that he has given me. We birth a new Africa. Renewing this physical continent. We bless the African man on the mother continent and all over the world with new lenses, with new insight, with new innovation, and with solutions. God's word over this continent has long been waiting, and now this king has spoken. Tonight, we bury the parts of the old that no longer serve us nor our vision well in this time. And in its place, we embrace the new, and we receive it with gladness, with gratitude, and with thanksgiving. I bless all of you with capacity. And the reason I specifically bless all of you with capacity, especially us as Nigerians, I think right now we are generating, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe 10,000 megawatts. If God just gives us 100,000 megawatts, the grid will collapse. So before God blesses us with the ability to change this world, I first of all bless all of you with the capacity to receive it well so you can be effective transformers from this continent. And so I bless you with the spiritual, mental, intellectual ability, capacity, and infrastructure to truly elevate the people and continent of Africa. Africa, be fruitful and prosper. God bless you all. God bless Africa indeed.